Welcome back to your favorite podcast, Two Homeschool Moms. I'm Nikki. And I'm Ashley. If you're looking for real, raw, and relatable moms who talk all things homeschool and mom life, you're in the right place. Welcome back to the Two Homeschool Moms podcast. Today, I threw Nikki off because Nikki <laughs> decided to text me in the middle of the night something she wants to change in her homeschool. And I was like, wait, don't tell me. We're going to talk about it on today's episode. So the topic of today's episode is going to be unschooling. But before we get into that, what updates do you have? What's been going on besides unschooling? You're not allowed to talk about it yet. (laughs) Oh, let's see. A whole bunch of crap. I'm in this uh, phase of just like change right now. So I'm like, I tore apart my bedroom like yesterday. And I was like, why did I do this? Like, I didn't really have the energy, you know, but it's just one of those things once you start and then it's scattered all over your bed and everywhere that you have no choice but to put it away because you have to sleep on your bed. Clean out mode and just freaking havoc and staying up way too late because my mind is just like going in a million directions of all the things that I am thinking about for like the upcoming year and all the things I'm thinking about for this year. Just been a little chaotic. We've had some health crap um, that we're dealing with and a whole thing. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> How was your work trip? Um, it, it was fine. I mean, my, we're the work part was great, but the traveling, it was just so many planes to get to like what should be a two hour flight. I was on like three different planes totaling six, seven hours. So that part really sucked, but my work trip was fine. Everything was great at home with the kids and husband. And so. So he didn't like burn the house down? He did not burn the house <laughs> down. Um, yeah, I mean, everything was fine. They ate all the food I left and they got the girls did some of their schoolwork, which was nice because normally I hadn't had them done school when I was gone so that was nice that they were able to handle it I had to teach Nick how to use the teacher's manual (laughs) (laughs) oh boy um I I, my both my daughters are like dad can't help us and I was like girls like logically I'm pretty sure he's smarter than me so I'm pretty sure he can figure out the problem to help you but they did great. So well, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that was great. My my dog always gets anxious when I leave. Mm. Like he threw up, of course. And oh, so no. yeah, the Nick worst. always gets pissed uh, because the there's worst. puke everywhere in his bed. Yeah. So that's what I did yesterday. I had to like wash all like our bedding and you know. The worst. The absolute the worst. worst. Yeah. I don't um, I don't know what's worse, like child vomit or like animal vomit because they can easily be just as bad yeah and like this was this was like really like it should be gross but like acidic and so like i had to wash his bed like a hundred times and you know how dog oh my beds gosh. are yeah like there i had to wash this whole thing and it, i'll have to buy a new one probably and at least kids, you can kind of like toss them into the bathroom, but like you might not even be around like your dog, you yeah. know, like so ugh, the worst. Yeah, we have like a 16 year old who just well, he just turned 16 this month um, and he's he's so grumpy and just like <laughs> old and like he yeah. thinks he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants. <laughs> Um, and like he's so funny like we have to push him outside to go to the bathroom and then like redirect him to go back out because he's like oh no I'm done and I come back in and like no you're not because you'll come back in then you'll poop <laughs> literally like the second he gets inside it's like he, he doesn't like to be outside anymore and so like, he like runs back in it's like no go go yeah. back out stubborn. it's like ugh, a stubborn. stubborn old man yeah <laughs> it's ridiculous but um, so I have one more update oh yeah I went grocery shopping and I oh, yes. found these miraculous oranges that you were talking about. So oh you God. can talk about them since you told me about them. <sighs> They're sumo oranges and they literally taste like candy. They're super mm-hmm. sweet. They're seedless. They're ginormous. They're easy to like. They're like a cutie, but just like bigger and i feel like Mm -hmm. sweeter yeah um and they're super seasonal so they're only around to like april and then they go away for like the rest of the year i googled them (laughs) last night because i have to google everything and i'm like what is this and that was the first thing i saw that they're seasonal and then my heart broke because i'm like yeah, I love them. That's why I go and I buy like a crap ton and spend like so much money because <laughs> they're so expensive because they're like two something a piece. 
Yeah. I At least I they are by me. I got like a bag of four for like $7. So yeah, that, that sounds about right. Yeah, I got a bag and then I got two extra. I went today. I went to Trader Joe's. And so because I have to have one every day, it's like my snack. They're so great. And, and yeah. I think it's helping me not get sick because Molly kind of got yeah. like a little cold thing going on and I haven't caught it yet. So it must yeah. have like a ton of vitamin C in there. It does. That's what I, when I Googled it, they have like 146% of your daily vitamin C <gasps> is in one orange. Wow. So you're like getting more than you need just by eating that one orange. Wow. Yeah. They're a game changer. And like Nico is really, he likes oranges, but the cuties have so much white on them yes. and he doesn't do well with the white and yeah. these it, it's, there's barely any. And so he's like, this is amazing. I don't share. <laughs> I mean, they have their own. <laughs> But. Oh, no, no, no. We can't afford that. Do you know how much she would eat, like, oranges, like, with both, both of us? Are you kidding? Even my, um, like, there's no way. I hide them, and I don't share them. Oh, my gosh. They're so good. But they yeah. are big. I will say that. I ate one before dinner last night, and I was like, yeah. oh, crap. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. They are huge. It's the perfect snack. Not something you want to eat with your meal, but, like, alone. <laughs> yeah, like a perfect snack in between breakfast and lunch. Perfect. Yeah. So go get your sumo oranges because they're going to be out of season soon and they're great. Yeah. Maybe when you come in April, they'll still have some and we can go, you know, tease <laughs> everyone and just eat it on video together. <laughs> <laughs> just eat it, be eating orange. We should do that. We should go to Trader Joe's and get like our favorite snacks and just yes. eat them. And have a Trader Joe's haul. Because <laughs> that just sounds great. What else do you do when you're on vacation with your friend, you know? That like, sounds what I want to do. Yeah. All right. Enough about oranges. Let's mm. get into your midnight <laughs> rants. <laughs> I'm always so shocked when I open up your text messages in the morning. Oh I'm like, God. what was Nikki up to last night? <laughs> so yeah. for reminder, Nikki sent me a text, <laughs> I want to say Friday night, saying, yeah. I think I'm going to unschool. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny so just hearing it. Let's talk about what unschooling is. So I Googled it. I think I have my own definition, but I want to say what it is to Google. So homeschooling as an educational approach where children learn outside of a traditional school setting, often led by parents. And there, where is it at? It's child-led learning where they're learning their interests. So interest-led learning, which I didn't really know that that was part of unschooling mm -hmm. was where it's really interest-led. Yeah. So that is the official definition of unschooling. Can I tell you what I think unschooling is when I hear that? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's just pre preface this video by saying nobody get offended, okay? Like, this is so new of a concept to both of us that, like, we're not speaking factually here. We're going right. to speak based on our thoughts and opinions. Everyone has one. Um, and so before she makes her statement of what she, you know, imagines unschooling as, I just wanted to put that out there because mine's probably going to be even worse than hers. So here okay, we go. Good. All right. So, and I'm not trying to be mean. That's not, that's no, what no, 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 no. We're not being mean. I just. I have a, what is like a pre, what is, what is that word? Predetermined, <laughs> like a, okay, I'm not going to say, never mind. Anyway, no, so. Don't ask me those questions about words, you know? I hear unschooling, I think of kids running around in the woods, like, like there's no curriculum, there is no school books, they are just living life. And if they learn something, they're learning something. But it's not, it's it's more like outside in the world. There's nothing like anyone is following to teach them certain. That's what I view as homeschool or unschooling in homeschool. Yeah. I mean, same for the most okay. part. Like, except I would have thrown in like, you know, the, I think I, we sent each other a meme. It was like a song with like the Amish and like, um, <laughs> oh gosh, again, we are not offending, but this was just like a, a version of what I envisioned as unschooling is just those types of people or like people who just don't have schools by them, like in other countries. And so their idea of like schooling is like going through like their work with their family, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, or just like super religious where, um, 
um yeah i don't know they live on a farm and they just work on the farm i don't yeah. know very like outdoorsy yeah. like in nature and i can like picture certain instagram pages where like yes they, i know you're an unschooler like yes. there's little mud kitchens which i think is cute but that's what i that's where my mind goes so we <laughs> talked about what unschooling is definition wise and what our thoughts are so please tell me what happened friday night so i kind of got obsessed and was binging the channel on youtube um norp and south i think it's how you pronounce it okay um k-n-o-r-p-p uh and they are a ginormous channel who unschools and they have like nine kids and i absolutely love the this couple's like personality i actually think they have po a podcast as well and i don't know how i came across it in my youtube feed if it was mm -hmm. something i searched i don't remember it was so late at night but i was like hooked on I happened to be like find the video that was like how I unschool my kids or something my nine kids and I was just like what how do they unschool nine kids at the same time and I just got thrown into this rabbit hole and it changed my perspective on like what unschool look like to me because there there's so much but like the reason I even got behind this topic in the first place it's kind of been on my mind for a long time mm -hmm. and I feel like I just wasn't I didn't have a name for it um because you know and everyone who watches my individual channel knows I have struggled with curriculum mm -hmm. I have struggled pretty much in the last two and a half years with curriculum and the choices that I've made and not finding those like perfect curriculum that just works right for us okay. um more than just like a couple months and so you know thinking for next year i'm like i don't know what i want to do and i'm back at square one like i was last year and this year has just kind of been just as much of a fail as it was for me going through the process and thinking of what i needed for this year mm -hmm. um and so i'm like how how do i fix that like how do i change yeah. So I'm like, how do I fix this like dilemma that I've run into? And like, we've also run into this thing where we're like, our love of schooling is diminishing. She's not as excited to do some of the things. And, you know, I was reading memories, you know, I love Facebook for the fact that they have those memories on there. And I love being able to look back and see how much we enjoyed the beginning and how she gets so excited to want to do math the next day or get so excited to want to do, you know, the projects or the fun things. And like, mm -hmm. so much of that I took away um, because I got wrapped in this like image of what my homeschool should look like and thinking that I needed all of these like curriculum books and you know every single subject known to man <laughs> and trying to cram that in your homeschool week and I think it just became too much and I'm like okay so how do I simplify that how do mm -hmm. I how do I look at it in a different lens of what does she really need to flip and know how do I cater her education what is a good education can we even mm -hmm. start with that question right. Because like we grew up with knowing that education was going to school and getting a college degree and everything else. But like in in the way the world is going, I don't see that being for everybody anymore and it being more modernized to say that's OK. I don't even know if modernize is the right word, but um, acceptance maybe more than modernized. Like people are more accepting of people choosing not to go to college because mm -hmm. they're choosing their passions over. Um, degrees that they might not even need a degree for. Um, and so I'm like, you know, I've had the conversation with you where I'm like, language arts, what, what in the world, why does she need to know all the things in grammar that she's never going to remember when she's writing a paper right. um, or an email <laughs> or uh, whatever she does for her job? It's just, it's never going to equate to needing to know the ins and outs of how to write a research paper unless she goes in that field. Um, you know, it's just things that I'm questioning that I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't utilize this. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how to do it. Maybe there's certain aspects like, uh, 
parts of speech that could be important, you know, like nouns and verbs and all that. But then I look at this and I go, okay, look at this home unschool family of nine and their version of, they still have guides. And I don't mean like curriculum. I mean like it's whatever child led interest that they're working with. Mm -hmm. They'll research, they'll, they'll, they'll use resources. Mm -hmm. Um, So if their kid is like super pumped up on math, they have no problem, you know, using Mia Academy or whatever those are. Um, if their kid really wants to dive into that subject. And it's like letting go of the mindset of thinking we have to keep a child on a subject for a certain amount of time because, oh, it's too quick if they move on to the next thing that they're interested in. No, because you're going to retain what you're interested in the most. Mm -hmm. And so their idea, I mean, they have kids all the way into their 20s and they all seem well-rounded, intelligent, And like, they help guide them, you know, obviously a third grade, um, which that's another thing they take out like the levels, of course. And like, as most people should when we homeschool, you know, Um, but like, if you have someone of that age level there, if you ask them what their goals are, they're not going to be able to have a clue what they necessarily will need to learn or want to learn for that year. So they are, they, they're able to give them open ended questions and things to kind of guide them in what they think they may, they might might be interested in but it's so like laid back and just like what they want to learn there's so many different aspects that we can it's almost like a unit study Mm -hmm. you you can pull in spelling and vocabulary naturally without needing to go like you know have a list or highlight you know things like that or just discussing whatever book they're reading. Um, Hey, do you know what that word is? Do you know what that means? And like, oh, hey, you don't, let's go look it up. This is how we use a dictionary, Mm -hmm. you know, like kind of just allowing the freedom of choice. Now, it doesn't mean like they're going to be able to sit on screens all day. Um, But like there has to be that freedom there because I'm just like, she's not, I know she's not retaining this stuff right now. Like we're doing yeah. so much and she's just not, she doesn't care. It's not interesting enough to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and right now, like over the weekend, she's been really passionate about like cursive writing. And so she just started cursive and she's already like figuring out how to loop everything together. And it's mm-hmm. not perfect, but like she's super interested in that. So she's so doing like, it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's like, what am I doing with my life? Like why, what is education? What does she need that we could sit there and say, my kid is well educated? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we were talking about on the phone. I don't write an email thinking this is a verb. This is a noun. Like I just know how to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I totally get that part. And it definitely sounds like you guys need to simplify. It sounds like you're not enjoying your day. You're not enjoying it. She's not enjoying it. So obviously something is wrong. You know? Yeah. I just don't. Am I the type of person that I could just picture taking away all my curriculum? Hell no. <laughs> like, I can't picture that. And let's not even talk about the crap I've already ordered for I next gonna say, year. I also received a follow up text from Nikki <laughs> Sunday asking about a curriculum. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah. you have yes. a problem with curriculum, Admit. curriculum like most of Admit. us. Yeah, yeah, because you know, it makes me feel like I have control. It makes mm-hmm. me feel like curriculum makes me feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to. But am I really doing what I'm supposed to? Or am I literally just replicating public school in my own home? Mm-hmm. What, what, yes, are we're not doing it all day, every day, you know, like we're not, we have different schedules, we have different routines and things that we incorporate into our homeschool day. So we're not super replicating um, public school. But some of the things that we're learning that I, you know, I've preached so much about how, <sighs> you that you need to utilize but at the same time why yeah and I mean I I think it depends though so I think that's why there are different homeschooling styles like I feel like the traditional method works best for our home it my kids are gonna get their stuff done and that's it I don't have time to be like super figuring out unschooling because I work all day so like they would probably just be sitting in their rooms I don't know doing what Um, so I think that's where everyone needs to like understand, like if what you're doing isn't working, then yeah, that's where these other methods come into play. And I think ultimately, regardless, if you unschool, 
if you do traditional, if you do what Charlotte Mason, whatever methods, I think all of our kids are going to be okay because yeah. they have like this extra level of parent support, regardless of what style you use. Yeah, I know. I agree big time. I just, for me, it just seemed like we were going in circles and not getting anything out of the things that we're currently doing and not finding the joy. And I get not everything is going to be joyful, you know, to learn, mm -hmm. but some things are just necessity. But it just made me question everything. Like what is necessity? What are the things that are going to give her that future and maybe if I focus on the life skills and the fun, those other things will just come naturally mm -hmm. and not necessarily out of a curriculum book. Yeah, she may just ask like, hey, can I learn about this? So what if you tried it now? Like, what if you just said we're done? Oh my God, that's so... Would you die? Like, we're oh God, done I'd with die. this curriculum? I'd die. Like, even this week, like, we were supposed to pause... Time out our math curriculum because I'm like, we're going to focus on multiplication this week. And I couldn't yeah. do it. She's like, I thought we were going to pause. And I'm like, no, we're starting a new book right now. <laughs> like, So we moved on to these measuring unit, you know, and I'm like, what am I doing? Like I have, it's me. I have the harder time like putting it aside because I feel like I were going to fall behind. I feel it, but I know that's not... Yeah, you're not falling. There's no one to fall behind from. I know. And so it's <laughs> mental. But at the same time, it's just like I'm trying so hard. And I don't know like the best way to get out of that mindset other than just like starting fresh the new year completely different and just sitting down with her and going, hey, maybe what's five things mm -hmm. you are really interested in and want to learn about. Yeah. And then I can go from there. And if it happens, you know, to weed into other areas, then like, fine. I'm still going to have her do math because I think, but I'm totally outsourcing that mm -hmm. next year. But I think that's something that no matter what degree she goes in, she'll utilize basic math skills. And if she hardens those skills, the better. But do I think she needs to graduate in like calculus? No. Yeah. And it just depends. But I mean, you can decide that more once you're in middle school or high school. So what if you tried like in the middle where you you still have something? So you feel like you're kind of being led like, um, what is it? Campfire curriculums or kind of yeah. gather around because they're you pick a subject like right. campfire is almost better because they have like a zoologist or a vet where you're kind of just learning about that and then there are like language arts or science elements but it's not like a curriculum yeah you know i've just never really been good at unit studies per se at least purchased ones <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what my hang up has been on those. It's just maybe time more than anything um, because it's always been an addition on to what we're doing. So if I didn't have the other things, maybe that would be an option. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of just up in the air. I, I've just been circling around in my thoughts and just trying to figure out like, how can I make it more fun for her and how can I get that love of learning because even at this point like her love of reading has even died mm -hmm. down yeah um so just trying to find something or taking the summer to just like figure it out yeah and like, i have a backup her. plan i mean i've obviously already bought some curriculum for next year but uh, i don't know it's just it just made me like i'd love to hear other people's feedback too and like what they think an education is and I'm not talking about what your mom or your grandmother or your you know older peer who is used to public school and knowing that there's this like linear list of you know to do's that you should have under your belt by you know whatever age mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that I'm talking about like what you truly in your your rooted self think you need as a educated 18 year old by the time you're done with school 
Because here's the thing, like, I, I think I posted this on my Instagram, but it's so true. You know, we at 18, they're expected to make all these life decisions and choices and be this adult and go on living their adult life. But, you know, six months prior to that, they were asking him to go to the bathroom. You know, for most kids that are in public school. <laughs> so how do we go from that to being an adult? And then what's what's the importance there? What what labels you an adult that can make well rounded decisions? Is it the curriculum that we're using? Is it more on the life skills aspect? Are they doing fi like we're doing financial literacy? She's loving that. She's learning. Mm -hmm. She asked me if we can get a bank account for her. Right. Yeah. Um, those are the things that she's interested in because those are the things that are real life that she sees us do mm -hmm. that, you know, I have a job, I get paid, it's going in my bank account. She gets chore money. If she gets any kind of money, it's, you know, that's her like savings account, so right. to say. So I don't know. I hope this made sense today. I just, <laughs> it was a rabbit hole and it was just like, I had to put it out in the universe somewhere, but yeah. That makes sense. I feel like, I mean, yeah, I feel, I understand what you're feeling. It's that you're, you should enjoy your days. You shouldn't like have frustrations or like dread them. And like, you know, that's just, it's not good for you. It's not good for her. No one's going to learn in that environment. And so you have to just find what works best, but yeah, you might have to just let it all go and try. Um, and I just wanted to point out, I did like look at pros of unschooling and just because you were talking about it, the pro is building independence, which I think is funny because our podcast episode, we were just talking about that. Like, yeah, like that's more important to me. I'd rather my kid understand how to do their laundry and cook a meal when they're 18 than solve a... Well, and we talked in that episode about uh, child led yeah. being what they're going to retain and what their, you know, their interests are is what's going to be the most beneficial. So if you haven't heard that episode, go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, we'll have to see. I might have to like literally clean out my entire collection and just keep like resource books on one. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even tempted, um, to think yeah. that I have to be on this like rigid schedule. Yeah. Or just find the balance. Like maybe you can't go completely like wild in the woods, like learning about <laughs> trees. Like maybe like you need to balance it out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's what's happening is like you're doing too much I think I've told yeah. you that you're doing too much yeah. like it's not that important but like I could I could never it's nothing against unschooling but like it just would not work for me it would not work for my kids maybe Nico he's a little feral he could <laughs> <laughs> he would probably benefit the most from that type of learning but I think that this was fun. But yeah, I want to hear from anyone down below in the comments, like what you thought unschooling was. And like my whole persona has changed because now that that's like it's interest led learning, which I love my viewpoint, I think has definitely changed on unschooling. Yeah, go check out that those that couples channel because they're they're so fun. I would never have just like pictured them like these unschoolers, you know, you always just hear like things, you know, I'm not even going to mention what but it, you know, like, here's the vibe that There's is in the universe. There's a negative persona of yeah. unschooling. Oh, we'll say yeah. it. There, yeah. there is some people that make you be like, eh, not, <laughs> not for me. Yeah, but or like, they're example. the weird ones. And like, all, right. yeah, no, yeah. like, these people did not come across that way at all. They were hilarious. And it was just fun to watch them. I mean, they have, they're real. They had like a real uh, house that they were like, just um, updating and just like living they had no cabinets in their kitchen like they I mean it was fun it was fun to watch them and see like how they do everything yeah awesome well I think that was a good wrap up of yeah. this unschooling episode no hate no hate <laughs> nothing there all right guys we will talk to you later bye bye we want to hear from you. Your feedback is invaluable to us. So let us know your thoughts on today's episode. Share your topic suggestions or ask us any burning questions you may have. Your input shapes the direction of our podcast and we're here to create content that resonates with you. If you enjoy listening to homeschool stories, curriculum reviews, advice, struggles, and overall mom life, this podcast is for you but so is our YouTube channels. Don't forget to check out our individual channels. We share even more content, insights, and a behind the scenes look at our lives. Thanks for listening.